how do I stream it? Um, there should be, there should be something at the bottom that allows you to record as well, or I'll be uploading this to YouTube after, so I can always just send you the link to whatever works for you. Great, great. Okay. Um, yes. So we'll we'll okay, get about so... we'll get about thirty five minutes per Zoom recording here, and then if it runs out, uh, I'll just reset up another one and just come back in after. Okay, guys. Okay. Wonderful. So welcome. My name is David, and I'm a freedom fighter, freedom warrior for about three years now in Canada. Um, I was, uh, I, I ran away from the Polish communist, uh, sorry, Soviet communist regime from Poland as a child with my parents through the border illegally as it got so bad that, uh, you know, from 1980 to 89 was martial law, uh, it was police hour, it was daily ratings and beatings and arrests and uh, and uh, I'm not allowed to meet with more than two, three people at a time. Um, like I say, daily brutal beatings, clashes with the police and the people and uh, no toilet paper, no food, basically running for freedom. And now we see the same regime. But now I see a blend between communism and fascism at once creeping up on Canada. And I have a child that was born is a born citizen. You know, I'm I'm some people call me that I am a foreign national because I was born somewhere else, even though I'm a citizen of Canada for 34 years or so. But my child is a born national and I do not want her and I do I will fight till the end to prevent her from running with her children through the border illegally for freedom. After I traveled half the planet for freedom. And um, so, you know, I, I you may have seen some of my talks with Dana and with Trevor, as they are some of the people I bring on my lives. I, that's what I do to this morning. I had uh, Pastor Art Pavlovsky on. Uh, he's an amazing lion freedom fighter who, who keeps saying today, like everyone else, unite power to the people, you know. Um, and I also am a, um, a member of uh, several tribe councils of our First Nations in Canada, as I'm trying to help the tribes unite and also to get as many of them on our side in the freedom movement before we return to Ottawa and as we're gathering people, we're literally traveling the nation. Like I, I just got off a week convoy, you know, making networks across Vancouver Island, connecting people, self-sufficiency. I have self-sufficiency groups, you know, self-sustainability groups. We're, we got networks in place, farmers in place, lands in place. And I am, um, because I'm a, a, on a tribal, council of a few tribes i i am always advised and taught by medicine men and women and uh, healers and pro land protectors you know chiefs clan mothers i was given a clan, name by clan mother mohihi khan and the golden wolf and so i i work with everybody within the freedom movement with all the people for the people by the people it must be this way. The government has to be basically taken down apart and rebuilt because it is for the people, by the people, and it should be and it will be again. So now we're facing problems. Everyone is. We're seeing more and more people approach us as we travel around spreading the word as everyone is receiving these letters and emails from the banks that we have to claim uh, you know, ad agree to a digital agreement, new digital agreement with no option to decline. So I said no to TD Canada Trust, my bank of 30 years or so. Um, so I'll be able to have an account, but I'll be able not to use my card again anywhere. I will not be able to use online banking. I'll be able to go into the bank and do my banking, which is two hour away trip for my little island anyhow. To do that, um, I choose not to obey. We are now faced with the choice of doing the taking the easy way or or take doing the right thing, you know. Yeah. Doing the so um I 
and one of the people I talked to, like you see, is Trevor and Dana, who also give us the, in detail what we all talk about in the freedom movement and how it all goes back to natural law and stars and water and all the elements, basically. Um, and there is where you come in, my friends, as you have information that is very important for the freedom movement for all people of Canada because uh, projects like UNDRIP is meant not just for the First Nations, for all people of the land. So you guys, I heard, have amazing information on how to deal with the digital banking, how to deal with doing or not doing taxes and contributing with our tax money to these wars that our Trudeau is sending money to, <clears throat> which is, in my opinion is not a war, it's a money factory. You know, it's a money laundering factory going yeah. on and so on. Um, so, and, and also, so, so how to become a sovereign being. As the first child in BC was born as a sovereign being recently with an indigenous name, we want to follow and lead by example. So thank you guys for having me and and please share what you have. I have a little notepad and paper here. I will be taking notes, even though you're recording, just for my own information to share with people who need. Like, you know, Trevor is on the run as we speak. Yes. They won't even let me post an audio uh, recording he sent me about a very suspicious police activity happening in Alberta right now, as they are arresting freedom fighters and priests all over the place. Um, <clears throat> so he is on the run because he helps homeless people, basically, and be believes in God and the creator and is a freedom fighter uh, with a voice. They want to shut down. Like me, I was in Facebook jail 14 times. I ended up on a list. Police called me up of people with high potential to cause harm, like our doctors. So they're just trying to shut me down, about to be in Facebook jail for 15 time. And the police keeps harassing me, right? So the it's floor is do. yours. <laughs> yeah. Well, the I want floor to say is yours. They, thank you so much for talking with us. Um, I'll introduce myself. I'm Marcel, the family Bassett. Um, I found private law and sovereignty uh, through a personal claim of right, as well as founding your own sovereign society in 2009. Um, I have a background as a sales consultant, so I just studied all the different experts out there at the time. Everyone had a part of the answer. Um, so my goal was just to find all the answers, do it myself, prove if it worked or not. Uh, by about the second or third year into this, um, we figured out how to get the sovereign bank accounts. It's defined as outside the country. It's unregistered, unincorporated. It acknowledges your rights. And the paperwork uh, that you do to found your society and claim your rights is all you need in order to open the account. Um, and, uh, and then we also have a sovereign identity document here. Uh, that I'll show you guys. It's actually a lawyer attesting. It's a lawyer notary uh, who does an identity document attesting to you standing under your own law and your own society, as opposed to legality. Um, so when we figured out the bank account side of it, um, I started having uh, dames of justice from Knights of Jerusalem, ex-senators. I met Penrose Dominique. She's a priestess from Haiti, uh, considered royalty pretty much. Um, I met Popoy, people of the Salmon, Jacqueline Stump of the Chakotan Nation. Uh, David Harper, the Grand Chief of the Cree Nation, taught us how to do um, private law indigenous courts or sovereign courts that outrank legal code. It's a superior foreign jurisdictional judgment. Uh, we can all use that once you have your own societies to hold judges accountable. Those judgments get entered into the legal court clerk, and then the clerk and the judge have 30 days to enforce it. If they don't, they can be arrested by the legal system. I have a client named Robert Ritzman. He had the FBI arrest a judge and 30 attorneys because uh, they're committing securities fraud. Uh, so how to audit the courts, do those processes against them. Um, when you do your society, you get a fee schedule. So as an equal, an order cannot give an order to another equal. Everything has to be offers. So you become a contract for hire. So if any agent gives you an order that makes them liable for your bill. Uh, we also understand how to notice them of willful negligence, which means they're doing something incompetent. You notice them and they keep doing it anyway, be it police or whoever. It removes their insurance bond and makes that agent fully liable financially and in private law and legal code. Um, so... Uh, the nice thing about this is, is you can have your private rights, your private law, your private society, and still use the legal system with all rights reserved. 
So you can still get a phone contract, but your rights are intact. And that's the answer to this digital banking stuff, basically. When you have your society, it's a separate legal entity, except for it's unregistered, unincorporated, but it's recognized legally. Um, and that allows you to run your finances through it. Um, it has its own line of credit. It's a generational trust. So if you pass away, you just appoint a new signing authority and then they would take over the trust later. Uh, it protects your own sovereign rights, uh, sovereign rights held by indigenous power. Um, this is uh, Tim, He's, he is gonna be basically jumping in at some point. He understands more technical terminology for the linguistics of the words that we use. And then he's also been studying the equity courts uh, where you file an appeal on their judgment to the Supreme Court. It's a uh, de novo, uh, it's a thing on the, on the appeal form that you can check that basically moves you into an equity court. Uh, it basically removes the act and statute, you're an injured party. And I'll let him explain more about that in a few minutes. Um, yeah. what, what we're in the process of doing is basically, we're gonna be sending door-to-door -door teams out. We're relaunching under privatelawtrusts.org. Um, the website we have right now is peacemakersociety.org. That's our results for the last 14 years. Um, there's a thing called, I'll go on screen share here just for one second, just to show you guys. Yep. And sorry if I'm talking fast. I'm just so excited to go through with this with you no, guys. No, that's good. That's good. Okay. I'm going to sh share, when it's in a video form, I will share it out with everyone that everyone Perfect. needs to hear. Um, so when you go to peacemakersociety.org, uh, in the top left here, it says freedom package. So if you click that, uh, we actually have, uh, we had 44 people with master's degree and all the things that we've done, Canada as a corporation, how not to contract, how to schedule an independent contractor agreement. So if you hire anyone or you have a group, if anyone false flags you or does anything they're not supposed to, you are not liable for them. Um, okay. There's a banking administrative process for debt. That's how you qualify under your society is there. Go through that. And then if you go to the bottom of the website here, we have an online teaching course. It's all rights. And then it's slow process eight. Eight makes you sign up for four headings to pop up here. One second. Question um, for you. Um, <laughs> yeah. So with the pros, um, yes. you know, uh, but you have a question, sorry. Okay. Hold on one second. The audio is kind of going not great yeah. because I'm using bandwidth subheading. So it's found your society purpose process. So it's a cheat sheet basically. So you search the name online, you get your domain, get a virtual office, send the three letters. So it breaks it down and points. These are the buttons to click. So this is the society on your society. And then the independent contract. Uh, this uh, website's here. We have VIP empire dummies. So whether you're you as a, you can compete with Bill and Lee people tax style tape starts with just bound on like resolution. Would there'll be more? I'll literally be limitless. Eastmakersociety.org. Just to recap, freedom package bottom. Uh, our YouTube channel is here. There's good info on their commercials and different law shows we've done. Uh, the university here, you click it, that takes you uh, all of these. So it, it, we basically have coaching on every aspect of running is this button, which then will take you to the help and accountability. People who work for the Department of National Defense actually organize for us how to set up your administration from your treasurer to whatever. And a lot of people don't have the skill sets to run the admin side of their thing, or they don't know how to build websites. So with us coaching people, we're going to do all that for anyone who needs it. We'll do all the admin for you. We'll build your website. Uh, we have door-to-door -door people going globally starting in about a week, week and a half. Um, so we can hand out information, any protests you guys are doing, any legal agent violating someone like Trevor, like that psychiatrist lady, we can yeah. pump it out globally. And Dr. And, Garvin. Yes, and that's where we can apply pressure to them in every single way possible. So basically, Peacemaker Society here is the results for 14 years. Uh, we're giving out, this is what we're giving out door-to-door -door freedom tickets. So hi, we're giving away your free freedom ticket. We have information, three letters reclaims your rights. Turns out you sold your kid <laughs> when you got a birth certificate, three letters gets you title back, gets you out of income well, tax, all of that. You know, this brings me right to a question. A lady asked me last, last night, she said, you know, that she really respects what I talk about and the wisdom shared. She's asked me, when I have a child at birth, does it become when and I when you sign that child and uh, sign that birth, certi birth certificate, does it mean for her that that child now belongs to the government? Basically, it's called hypothecate in a Black's Law Dictionary. It means you're pledging that child's title to the national debt, 
and it can be seized at any time, but you still have the ability to use it in the meantime. What you're doing with that form is you are incorporating your child to a bankrupt trust. So your name in all capital letters, that's how it is on all bank, uh, or, or sorry, on all legal ID. That's how you grammatically spell a bankrupt corporation. So birth certificates came out in 1933 in Canada and the USA. And that is the document they use to register you on an international exchange as a bankrupt corporation. And that bankruptcy is how they're able to issue fiat currency or legal tender that is not backed by gold or silver. It's backed by the people's registered property and your lifetime taxable value. The birth certificate is worth about $8 million. It's the lifetime value that you're taxable. As you get degrees and your income level goes up, its value goes up. And, um, and it's about 12% interest a year that it accrues. That's what pays it for everything. Everyone thinks income tax pays for stuff. It doesn't. Uh, it's the federal transfer payments are off of the, uh, the insurance from the birth certificate bond. And all of that is referenced for all the naysayers out there. It's 1985 Canadian Ownership Control and Determination Act. Um, we actually have a copy of that act in the information we give out as well. Um, there's a package that I send everyone when they enroll. Um, here, hold on. Uh, this is what we do at live events. Uh, I have a video up where we have about 30 people come out and we open societies for them in about two or three hours. So all wow. the inf all the information is in this and we have it digitally. I can email it to anyone and it's also in the freedom package in that as well. That's great. Uh, that's going to go around everywhere. And it reminds me of a little bit of what ladies at Stanford, they are doing in Ottawa and, and uh, the Commit Canadian Democratic Defense Association, which I am part of, and the Democratic Fund uh, trying to help. But you guys are really deep into that. Uh, so, you know, I want to ask you a basic question. A lot of people that have that same question, how do I claim myself as a sovereign being perfect um so it's three letters uh the the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna figure out what to call your society so i love trees society i love my family trudeau for treason whatever you want it to be um and then basically there's three letters that you found so how we you people always hear due process but what is that? So as an equal, we cannot give an order to another equal. We can only make offers and cure rights as per due process. So that's three letters. Letter one, we ask questions. So that's the notice of understanding is letter one. So we just say, let's say there, let's say you and I are neighbors, David, or, and there's a ball in the yard. We don't know whose ball it is. And I want to use that ball. So I send you letter one and say, hi, neighbor. You know, there's a ball in the yard. Do you mind if I use it? I believe I have the right to use it, you know, and, uh, you know, do you think I'm a good guy? Do you like me? If I do use it, are we going to get in a fight? You know, is it yeah. yours? Is it your wife's? So I send letter one. They have 10 days to answer. So you have 10 days to answer. Silence is consent. So as far as this example goes, when we're doing this to the corporation posing in fraud as government, um, they never answer us back in 14 years and silence is consent. So I send you letter one. You don't answer. After 10 business days, I send letter two. Now this is a notice, this is the understanding and intent. So now I put my intent in there. So I answer the question. So there's a ball in the yard, can I use it? I answer it, yes. You know, I'm your neighbor, do you love me? Yes, I think you're a great guy. You put in whatever answers you want and we mail letter two. So in letter two, I just say, hi neighbor, you didn't answer letter one, I'm sending you letter two. If you don't answer in 10 days, the answers I've listed will count as your answers, that you're in agreement. So 10 days goes by, you don't answer. I now have an understanding between equals because questions were asked and then answered. And now I'm claiming the right. So the third letter is a claim of right. Uh, it, I send that and then it takes 30 days to cure as law. On day 31, if you don't answer, that ball becomes mine under private law. I can now have private security protected and it's defensive property in the criminal code of Canada, a defensive property with claim of right. And it just says that you and anyone employed by you is not criminally liable for defending any property held under claim of right, even against legal agents entitled to possess it. And it says right under it, without claim of right, you have no right to defend anything. <laughs> so it's equal force and all of that. Um, but that's the actual act and statute that references it. And I have a copy of it. They've amended it so that the claim of right isn't available online now, but you get a copy of that in the course, basically. And then there's two other documents. There's a creation of society document, which is just what you're calling your society. 
and then your, there's your society oath. So the oath is just to cause no harm. So you can either just swear no harm, or if you have a belief in the creator or a religion, it's whatever that means to you. Uh, but it just says you will not cause harm to life, liberty, property, or rights, and no fraud and contract. And that is the actual law of the land. Everything else is a derivative of that. Um, and people say act and statute is law. It isn't. Act and statute is corporate rules given force of law only if there's a valid contract. And because every legal agreement is written in legalese, it all means something else. So there's no meeting of the mind. So in contract law, there's not one valid legal contract and you have no obligation to a fraud. So this, this three letters that you do forms a valid lawful understanding and agreement. It gives you diplomatic status with diplomatic immunity. You tell them to do a, a political status determination when they go to act on you. Um, they're willfully negligent, they're liable. Um, yeah, and I think I answered your question there. So it's three letters and then the oath and a creation of society document. Um, and that gives you title back to everything. The 1925 Administration of Estates Act says a competent heir can reclaim dominion over anything held in a bankrupt trust. And Canada and the USA as corporations posing as government have been bankrupt since 1933. Before that, you had gold and silver backing money. Now we have the registered property of the people, their biological property and their taxable lifetime value being registered to back a national debt. And in Canada, it's a USA based corporation. And anyone who understands finances, you would never pledge assets under anything that's bankrupt ever. Yes, yes. And gold and silver, I think, will always be the currency to go with. I met a freedom fighter who who spent four hours in this place. I won't say where there's a lot of gold there. And yep. four hours, he got $20 worth of gold. And he told us, uh, you know, he gave us a little hint. Because, you know, from in my opinion, so gold, and as they're trying to say it, it won't have uh, value. I think it will always have value. It's just part of their lies and what they do. But thank you for explaining that question because that was very crucial for everyone to hear. You bet. And any yeah. questions you have, please hit me with them because then I'll give you specifics because I get excited and I know the overview might seem a little overwhelming for people, but literally you pick a name for your society, you buy the domain name for 30 bucks, uh, and then you do a founding where you have six people get together for the paperwork. So there's three founding members that creates the trust. And then you have three witnesses that replaces the need for a notary and makes that document court admissible in any court in the world. Um. You know, it reminds me of something that took place around 20 years ago in Toronto. I even had a crew of my own people, and we're going to do this as a, this movement called, um, they were called the, the uh, okay, I forget now, uh, the, the Church of the Universe. And they had made the, a Bible of their own. They had yeah. registered as a society and, and oath. You know, there was a ceremony they have their own beliefs they registered at the time the government was giving grants to people like you say six people three founding members three witnesses a bible a belief system part of their belief system is that they smoke ganja yeah and i actually had a friend who had nothing to do with it just become a member i had saw the card he said brother greg you know just so he could get weed for them for sure <laughs> you know, 20 years ago and they were actually doing that. We almost did that with my crew of friends. It reminds me of something similar. Uh, one thing I want to touch on is everyone's used to registering, submitting, or applying because that's what all, all documents are. But those are all forms of begging. As an equal, you don't register, submit, or apply. You record. You want to record your rights and title. And that's that three-letter process that you use to claim your society. That's how you notice anyone and record anyone to have your rights. Also with uh, property, when you buy it legally, that's the process you use to claim dominion over it under private law so it cannot be taken from you. Um, yeah. and, and if you do have to fill out a registration form, you sign all rights reserved beside your name. So your signature okay. and then all rights reserved. Once you have your society, I do all rights reserved peacemaker society law, but you could put all rights reserved under God 
all rights reserved under Allah, all rights, just as long as you have all rights reserved, like you always see in yeah, movies, it's that's a, a part it's of your signature it's now. It's important. It's important. I used to be a yeah. musician, and you, we used to have to do that as musicians. Um, I, I do have a few yeah. questions for you guys that hopefully, Please. because there's a lot of people confused and afraid, right, and the yes. freedom movement, or people who are on the fence, let's say. Um, people. You know, people in Canada are not, are not as brave as you see what's going on around the world in Europe right now, for True. example. So for one thing, land use bylaws. There's new land use bylaws coming, uh, you know, not just on drip and this huge attempt of a gr land grab. I, because I am um, in touch with our First Nations people, I know that right now police is moving in on the Watsawatin territories in Prince George, B.C., uh, without the consent, without authority, because the Governing Council of the Indian Act has given the lands away, and there is some crooked tribes and chiefs out there who are doing it and have been falsifying papers for years, claiming different positions, and uh, they are, you know, working with UN and on drip. And same thing is now happening in northern Alberta. The native lands were invaded because they want to push pipelines through it. And yeah. same thing they did to the homeless people in Vancouver. They just dumped everything of theirs in the dump and chased them away by force into yeah. I don't know where. So now also we here where I live on Denman Island, land use bylaws, enforcement bylaws are very harsh. Housing is very scarce and it, people are living with daily stress nonstop. And even people have to understand, maybe you can explain to them, on bylaws, how important it is to look into your local bylaws and stand up for your rights. Because if you really look into it, you, they it shows you that you think you own a house and you think you own the land, but you do not. As soon as you need to do anything in the permit and you have to abide by these enforcement bylaws. Yes. Um, so the number one thing is when you go private law, private law outranks legal code. All act and statute is a voluntary contract that they make it seem like you have to do it. So you may not always be able to physically stop police, but as soon as bylaw enforcement shows up, get the agent's name, their badge number, whatever information you can get. And then for $300, you can have a private investigator under your own private law, find out all their information, their home address, who they are, and you can issue them a bill. It ranges anywhere from 10,000 up to a million. As soon as they give you an unlawful order and you present your proof that you have dominion and title and private law, you would then have a fee schedule. So you can, all you do is you send a bill to that agent, wait 45 days, there's a notice of dishonor, a notice of default, and you do a universal lien through the PPSA office for 700 bucks that you literally bankrupt that agent. They're no longer bondable. They can't be a legal agent in that position anymore. You can do that to police, judges, anyone. And just to show you here, let me grab it. We have a litigation document on our website. So as Chief Justice, I've convicted all legal agents of fraud and securities fraud. That's the actual document there. And then I, have, Thank I, have, I have clients I've consulted who have done these liens. So this is an actual copy of leaning an actual agent. So there's the notice of dishonor, notice of default. This was in the state, so it's a UCC, but it's the same process in Canada. Just, just It's the universal lien for PPSA. And literally Sweet. this agent is bankrupt. You have a superior claim to all of their property, all of their assets. Now you may not get paid that because a lot of the, but it's a way to lawfully throw a punch and ruin that person's life. Like yes. you, you, their credit's gone, their mortgage is going to default, their wife's probably going to leave them, right? Um, and then, well, thank you for what you do, brother. You bet. Thank you. Um, and then also, um, just as far as I, I have a criminal defense lawyer named Mike Cook. In 2014, they put me on Winnipeg Top 10 Most Wanted uh, when I was billing the police cadets. Um, and he actually <laughs> reserved my rights in court. So I was able to stand under my own society law, uh, my own oath. The judge, I had two judges, Judge Korn and Judge Garrick, acknowledge our jurisdiction and that they understood what we were doing. Um, and that's where uh, we only have five minutes left in this segment before it's going to cut out. Um, so yeah. maybe what we'll do is I'll just finish talking on this a little bit and then we'll come back to segment two. And then I'm going to let Tim talk here um, because he has a lot of understanding on terminology, uh, being a signatory Indian, um, some other terms you can use, 
how to move the court from from act and statute into equity court where they're liable with you as an injured party. And I think because we're kind of on the subject right now, it's a good segue into what he comprehends. Yes. And then yes. and then once he gives you his, he'll probably take a few minutes. Uh, so we'll do a chunk of that segment. If we wind up running out of time there, we can do a third segment again. Um, but I think that's probably... Uh, I have a good. I have a couple more questions. But yeah, we have great. four minutes fifty seconds. Go ahead, you bet. Is is it, is it Tim? Is Eagle it Tim? eye, eagle eye, eagle eye. I have seen you around. Um, we we will jump into that subject when we run out of time. <clears throat> but <clears throat> um, just so you know, <clears throat> uh, I have been active with our First Nations people ever since they defied and took the law lodge down. Okay, in in Winnipeg. I am a Sificos warrior, okay, and uh, and uh, <clears throat> so there is a lot <clears throat> of uh, information that I think you have that that not only us, the freedom fighters, and all people of the land need to know about, but that will also go to our people, you know, of the Thunderbird Band and our Broken Head Band of the Edmonton Edmonton Cree First Nations, the Exificos and her people, because it is very important as they try to reclaim their rights and their lands, you know, uh, they, 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 they are planning on coming back, of course, and reclaiming their lands and putting up the Law Lodge all up again. Uh, of course, but because the government has failed to prove still that they are invading illegally, because what, what one thing yeah. I'll add there is is we we're all told that the, the the powers that be are a government. No corporation can be a government. It's in the limitation of powers of the Corporations Act that as soon as you incorporate, you descend to the level of a mere corporation. And the reason that is, is because they're limited liability commercially, which means they're commercially incompetent. So to be a government, you have to be fully commercially liable at all times under oath or attestation under penalty of perjury at all times. And you have to be unregistered, unincorporated. So they're an administrative governing body, but they are not actually a de jure government by process at all and these are again the things that uh, the the paperwork that we teach and have for you guys is the foundation it's sovereign rights held by indigenous power this paperwork gives you the bottom foundation to law that all law is built on so matter what act or statute someone's coming at you with you whip out this paperwork in this process and automatically you outrank them as long as you're not causing harm in a proactive mm -hmm. way. Self-defense, you can still defend yourself, of course. Um, but yes, you're right. And and a lot of people are used to either having a chief or in the States, they have the constitution, someone else acting as power of attorney for you. You can still belong to a constitution or a tribe or a clan or a society. But with this, your trust your paperwork still protects you. So if ever someone else were to mismanage something, your assets are safe. Same thing if you're a man or woman and you get married and then divorced, the trust is a separate legal entity, or, well, a private law entity that's legally recognized that nobody can take it. It doesn't matter if you yeah. go bankrupt, none of it. This, this is the foundation of everything for all freedom fighters who want to fight back. This is what you do. And they're not a real government. And that's why you don't want to vote for them. You record your own rights and title. And that's what this process is. Uh, we have a minute yeah. and a half left. So okay. Is, is well, that's why we want to deviate from the Indian Act and we want to deviate yes. from UNDRIP. As uh, yes. I already am uh, on to some people in our country, I've shaken hands with and looked them in the eyes on purpose because I know who they are. The, the fake chiefs that are selling off lands without authority. I'll talk to you in private about some of these things. For sure. But I look and forward... To, to the next segment in a minute. You bet. And the last thing I'll leave people with is a lot of, uh, I was doing some work with Popoy and people of the Salmon. I was invited yes. in to be a Wolverine clan member and uh, I love what they're doing. But in one of the meetings, we, we had a central banker on who was talking about taking them in a digital currency direction. What all First Nations need to understand and anybody needs to understand is once you go private law, you can back your own currency. And any yes. commodity can back currency from trees to land. In the USA back in the day, they had greenbacks that were backed by marijuana. Um, you can have it backed by gold. You can have it backed by silver. 
And as long as you can take that piece of paper, like Canadian tire dollars, right? And take it somewhere and get something for it. It has value. Another thing yeah, is we well, teach you how to set up an honor credit. So if you provide service to somebody, you can just keep a credit on your books for them as well. So um, we're going to get yeah. cut off right away here, um, but we'll, yeah. we'll pick this up. Yeah. And say well, the salmon people are doing great things, but oh, you, have are. To I love them. Under, you have to look underneath 